Welcome to the Encore. This week we are talking about the wind and the waves. Pastor Wes, welcome in. We uh, This is not, not a sermon series, right? No. Just a little no. one-off. Last week we had a little bit of fun with Pastor Ernesto bringing the couches in. Talking we, loud. We, real loud. Real loud. Then I started talking loud. I'm a loud person. I, I'm you, self, you I think can... I'm self-aware. Am I self-aware? Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> what if you're the guy that thinks he's self-aware and everyone's in the room like you don't know anything? Some people are not self-aware, Definitely dude. Not. No. there's. I think... Oh, wouldn't you say that we're all... Not self-aware about something. Well, that's what scares me to death. Yeah. Is that, because I see, and I'm like, I don't think this person knows. You Here's the thing. You can be a loud person. I'm loud, I know. Neil said to me the other day, he goes, you realize when Ernesto gets brought into the picture, Wes raises his volume because Ernesto is so loud. It's like, do I have well, to I, keep up with this guy? Right, what is it? Because you could, you could talk like this, and he would, he's a... He's a functional human, so he would stop talking. He and he, you he would, amps your energy level up. Something about Ernesto, geez, like dude, I, brings you up. I don't know what it is. Well, we've been in like restaurants or or, yeah. or waiting for. Sometimes like Ernesto is one of the only uh, movie partners I have anymore. Mm-hmm. Like you know, and uh, so sometimes he'll text me because like our being a pastor is a weird deal because. Yeah. Uh, our day off is like well, it fluctuates, but mostly Monday, right? Mm-hmm. So my Friday night, I can't. It's Sunday night. night. It's yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Like it's yeah. late Sunday night. So next Nesto, I know you're like 75 and go to bed at 8 30, but uh, yeah. I'm, Nesto I'm not will not text me at like 8 p.m. sometimes and go, dude, you want to go to a 10 o'clock movie in Flint? Like downtown Flint, like Flint 14. Dude. Mm-hmm. Like if you have a concealed carry permit, that's where you should carry it. <laughs> just I'm just kidding. I, I don't and I don't. But um I'm like, yeah, man. So we'll go. So we're waiting for a movie to start. And he's like, I'm in the movies. If I'm in the movies with you, I'm just like, hey, dude. And then the other day I was playing basketball. and mm-hmm. He's talking as loud as he was talking in here. And I'm thinking like, I hope nobody <laughs> knows who we are in here. We're the most obnoxious people in here. So you're talking all loud. Why is he so loud? He would say it's because he's Mexican. He, yeah, he blames it on his culture. That doesn't really I'm like, make- I know Mexicans are real quiet. Yeah. They're, they're quiet and polite. Yeah. <laughs> He's a super loud dude. So loud. Well, his, his, I get loud. His whole personality is he's a larger than life kind of a guy. That's oh, why dude, he's so he loved, just explodes but, into a room. Yeah, and I think I think you have that in you too. So when the the two of you get together, <laughs> it's just like so, um, I'm just gonna can, sit here on the couch I, and just play ping pong I, I in can, my head. And go, I can hear it happening, and I'm like, why are we being so loud? But I can't bring it back. Like I can't. Like, but it, yeah. It, anyway. He was here, and it was loud. It was fun. It was really fun. I don't know if people were annoyed that we went long. I felt like we could have talked for another hour. I forgot hour. we did that. Oh, we could. We could still be talking. It was fun. Three guys, fun. like, talking. I like those special things every once in a while, so. Self-aware. I, I'm loud. I... <sighs> yeah. What do you think you are that could be annoying if you don't check it? <sighs> oh, my goodness. Um <sighs> Okay, you're not self-aware. You got nothing. Ah! There's, not, there's nothing. In I have no flaws. Uh, I no, I didn't say that. I I know several flaws that I have that we won't get into. But the self-awareness, you're you're talking about like social, kind, social interaction. So yeah, so I'm not going to talk about how you can be unnecessarily cheap. I'm not going to bring that up. Yeah, no, I don't know what you're talking about. You think it's, <laughs> you think it's unnecessary? Well, sometimes I'm like. Is this really worth talking about two dollars right now? You're not cheap. You're super frugal, and that's a good thing. I'm super frugal, but sometimes it that. comes out, and I'm like Scott. But I'm. I feel like I'm very aware of that. <laughs> Maybe I'm not. Is that what no, you're, you're telling? You're me? aware of it. <laughs> I don't like to spend money. Um, I got nothing. Let's go. Uh, Let's if go. I think of something, I'm, I'm bringing it up. up. In the I'm bringing it up. Bring, so, yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm. I'm too loud. <laughs> okay. Um, the wind and the waves. Who's in the boat? Let's start there. Yeah, so there was a boat in the crowd. There's yeah. Jesus, and he put the disciples in the boat, sent the crowds away. Mm-hmm. I really liked that. I saw that, and I'm like, I, I've kind of noticed that other places, you know, before and there, and, and, and it, but it just stuck out fresh to me. Could have been a sermon by itself. That was the problem with this whole message, which yeah. is why it was too long. <sighs> it didn't feel long. Good. Because I'm looking at the clock, and I'm like, well, I usually, that's... I usually make fun of you for your time. I didn't think about it. I didn't, uh, didn't it was longer than I wanted it to be. Okay. But I thought, wow, you got like three sermons here. If yeah. I was in a preaching class, they would have given me an F. <laughs> like, pick a point, man. But 
I liked them all, so I preached them all. I did so, think that, that that was multiple sermons. Pick a but point. Anyways, yeah, yeah, no, I, okay. I should have done a three week series. Like, what's the hurry? Uh, uh, right. I'm, I'm, You're going to be preaching for the rest of your life. Yeah, like, calm down. I don't know what the <laughs> hurry was. I'm going to start over next week. Wind in the waves. And it, in the boat are the people that are sold out, man. Those guys, if you go back to where he called the disciples, mm-hmm. they left their old life. That's not to say you got to quit your job or quit your education or leave your family. That's not necessarily saying stuff like that. But they were not attached to the things of the world. The crowd had something to do. They had somewhere to be. They were they they were interested in Jesus. Mm-hmm. People are interested in Jesus. They might even believe in Jesus. I guess you're probably going to get to that. But the ones in the boat are going where Jesus said to go, doing what he said <clears throat> to do at all costs, all the time. And nothing else matters. You tell me to go into a boat in the middle of the night into a storm, that's what I'm going to do because Jesus said so. Crowds don't do that. They are the ones that are truly sold out, obviously disciples of Christ. They're with yeah. him. Yeah. So when you say that, just so we're clear, we're talking about more than a believer. Yes? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm not here to say that people in the crowds can't be a believer in Christ for real. I think there were those people and are those people. Mm-hmm. I think the Bible acknowledges those people. Mm-hmm. What's it say in 1 Corinthians 3? It basically says... Um, you live your life for wood, hay, and straw, and it'll all be burned up. Mm-hmm. You yourself, it says, you yourself will be saved, yeah. but so as through fire. Old uh, old Baptist semi-joke. <laughs> you get to heaven, but you get to heaven smelling like smoke because you never did any. You, you, yeah. you didn't go to hell. You were redeemed by the Christ. Mm-hmm. But you never did anything for the Lord. You have no. You, you didn't. You didn't do anything. You, yeah. you, you never sacrificed anything. You never. Served, you, you probably truly believe, and that's a hard reconciliation. Then were you truly saved? But yeah, I do think some people believe in Christ, but they sit in the crowd their whole believing life. Yeah, I think that's. I've done. It. I've sat in the crowd right. for lots of time. Right. And I knew the Lord, and I'm even convicted. I mean, I'm I'm in the crowd. I'm sitting up here. I have gifts to give to the Lord. I'm not doing it. I'm just sitting up here, living for the world. Yeah. So that was, you kind of answered that. And I was going to talk about who, who are the people watching. That's kind of what you're referring to there. The people that are not that are not completely in. They're not saying I'm going everywhere you're going to go. They're not in. And, and I do think there's some in the crowd that are not believers. There were plenty of people in that crowd that day in Jesus' life yeah. that um, were interested in him but did not believe in him. But I, just for the sake of anybody watching or listening that is a believer, you can be sitting in the crowd, man. You're phoning it in. And I've done it. I don't say that with a bunch of judgment in my tone. Mm-hmm. Man, I've, I've spent too much time in the crowd sitting around just watching people sold out to the Lord. Yeah. So the question with that then is, what is that person missing out on? What what does it really matter? Let's just say somebody would say, I know I'm saved, but I love my life. Like, this is good. Got my ticket out of hell, and I'm just going to do what I got to do. What what would you say to that person? What are they missing out on? They're missing out on everything that actually matters, everything that is truly fulfilling. Nothing in this world is as fulfilling and is as uh, worth it as the work of the Lord, having to rely on the power of God, seeing the fruit of the Holy Spirit working in a sold-out life, seeing Mm -hmm. people come to Christ, seeing disciples be made, having to pray to God to get you out of that storm because you're in the boat, pleading Mm -hmm. to the Lord and watching a miracle happen. People in the crowd, I said in the message, they don't have boat stories. They just hear stories of people that truly have to trust the Lord and are sold out. And they, they, they think they want those stories, but they don't want to get in the boat to get that story. So you're missing out on that firsthand encounter with Jesus. You know him, but you, you don't follow him. Yeah. What, what do you think that comes down to? What is the, what's the reason for that? Well, I'm, I'm only going to speak from my own heart. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I kind of like to hear what you have to say. I mean, I, for me, it is the idolatry. Of, if I'm in the crowd, it is the idolatry of the lust for the things in the world, yeah. hobbies, money, possessions, laziness. Mm-hmm. Like, cause it's no joke to get in that boat and go to the other. Everyone home, else went home, went to bed. Those yeah. guys are up all night scared for their life. And that's how it is in this Christian life. Sometimes it's a lot of work, man. And it, it's scary sometimes. And you just think, man, why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. Then Jesus appears and calms the storm, and pulls you out of the water and gives you a miracle, casts a demon out of a guy. And you're like, oh, that's right. This was worth it. But man, like, Leading up to that, it's exhausting. And um, sometimes I, truthfully for me, I, sometimes I just don't want to do it. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, so the, the laziness part is the part of the, the lust of the flesh, too, which you talk about the comfort. Mm-hmm. I would say very very similar answer to that is the reason, but I think on a practical level, those things of the world are right in front of our eyes. So it's just at the forefront, I can see this. This is kind of what I want. And yeah. sometimes we're not we're not able to see big picture or even fully understand sometimes. And so I think it's 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 just easier, flat out just it's easier. easier just to go, yeah, I'm gonna take this. And at the same time, it's like we we have our cake and eat it too. I I'm gonna go to heaven. So then we can mentally check out and say, this isn't really worth the work, but it is easier to not serve the Lord. It mm-hmm. really is, but it isn't better. Right. So like I look at like we're sports guys, I guess, grew up. Yeah. You know, maybe not everyone can relate to this, but you're basketball guy or whatever. Yeah. Um, I remember being a kid going to the varsity basketball game when I was a little boy, like 10 years old or whatever. Mm-hmm. My dad would take me to the Fenton varsity game and they were good. And um, band would play. Dun, 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 and then the crowd would cheer and then they come busting out of the tunnel. They run around, you know, you know yeah. the deal. They warm yeah. up. And um, then they play the game. And the whole crowd, you're not playing the game. You're there in your jeans, right? Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're cheering, and awesome stuff happens. And they are sweating. They're falling. They get hurt. They get limp, limping and carried off the floor. But something in me as a kid, I remember thinking, man, I want to I do that. Mm-hmm. I want to be down there on the floor because I want to, ex- whatever they're experiencing, we don't know what that is up here in the crowd. Right. That's what right. it's like. Dude, right. as a Christian, if you're in the boat, I, I, if you want, if you're in the game, you get hurt, you get attacked, you get carried off the floor, you're sweating, you're crying, and you, you look up in the crowd, everyone's comfortable in their jeans. And you're like, man, it's, it is, it's easier yeah. up there. It's not better, which, you know, and so a lot of people, man, they, they try to get on the floor and then they're like, well, this is too much work. I'm going to go back and sit in the stands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I try to teach my kids that I think about that too. Like anything, anything in this world that's worth it is worth putting in the effort for. So you, you know? think about whatever, you could relate that to sports. Those, those kids that you're watching on a Friday night, they're working hard all week long to, right. to even have a spot on the floor that we, that we don't see that type of thing. And I tell my kids that all the time. They 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 you know sometimes as a nine or ten year old boy, you just want to be good at things and want to try it, and you're not good. I'm like, dude, anything you want, you're gonna have to work for it. You could say the same thing for for marriage, of course. Like if you want this thing to su- succeed, you got to work for it. And so that's a good point. Going back to your idolatry, that's kind of what it comes down to. What right. what do you want the most? Right, you know, if you everyone's be- in the stands eating popcorn. Right, <laughs> <laughs> like that's what right. Christianity is like. A lot of people are in the stands. I've been I, no judgment. I don't want. I hope I'm not that now. Yeah. But I've been in the stands eating popcorn, just comfortable. Like I don't want to do all that. Yeah, I know, I know. Haven't you found though? This is off script. Now we're going off off script. Wait, off. haven't you found though? I I don't know. Like the older older you get, the more that you see chasing the wind, whatever you want to call it, just seems like more and more and more empty all it's, the time. It's 100% empty. I mean, I think if you're looking for it, God gives you wisdom, and you just see, like, this is not worth it. In the end, I'm going to be, <clears throat> again, eating popcorn and candy, and, and you just feel kind of gross and walk out, and yeah, those guys accomplished something. They, they won, mm-hmm. you know, again, to translate it to Christianity. They see the fruit of the fight. Right. And needing the Lord and all of that. And then, you know, if you're just sitting in the stands living for the world, it's just a kind of a, leaves you kind of a gross feeling. It does. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know. I feel like for me, I see that more and more because there's always st- still certain things that we strive to do on earth. Mm-hmm. And you just find like, huh, eh, it's just, just, I don't enjoy that anymore. That doesn't, just doesn't bring me the joy that I once thought Dude, it did. I, so I want to say too, we're not saying, someone out there that's working hard at their job, working in the shop or whatever they're doing, commuting somewhere right now, right. listening to this, your your earthly life is a waste of time. The question right. is, are right. you living for the Lord in that? Like maybe God has called you to that job or that education or whatever. That's not saying like if you haven't quit your job and gone to Africa to serve, the, that's, not, right. that's not the point. But some people are doing it to live for the things of the world, and that just leaves a pit in your stomach, I think. I mean, right. That's good. All right, so let's transition a little bit. You use the story of Mary and Martha. Um, what, what's the point of that story? You can just kind of give a little bit of a synopsis on that and 
and the point of it, and then I'll have some follow-up questions. Point of it is you can have, the interesting thing, it says Martha invited him into her home. Mm-hmm. A lot of people do that. They invite mm-hmm. Jesus into their life. They believe in the Lord. I think Martha did. Um, and then as he's teaching, mm-hmm. Mary's in there being taught the word of the Lord. Mm-hmm. She's worried and bothered, Jesus says, about so many things. At preparation, doing, she's involved in everything else but the word of the Lord. And that's what people yeah. do. They invite Jesus in their life. They're convicted. They're saved. They believe in the Lord. And they confess him as Savior. And then they spend the rest of their time missing, growing in his word. Like Mary, Mary dropped everything. Mm-hmm. And Martha was mad that she didn't continue helping. And that's what a lot of people do. They still get consumed with everything but growing in his word. And, and Jesus says, you missed it. You missed the good part. And so, what? So, just to uh, reiterate, what exactly is the good part? What is that referring to? I I would say things of eternal value. Mm-hmm. The good, whatever Jesus says and whatever he calls us to, is is nothing of earthly value. It's not. There's no. Te- he never calls us to. It never grows us in like temporary things that that are when Christ comes or when we die mm-hmm. and stand accountable to the Lord. He didn't call us to things that were worthless in that moment. Whatever he says, uh, what's he say? My, uh, the Bible says his word is ever from everlasting to everlasting. The grass withers, the flower fades, mm. but the word of our Lord stands forever. So whatever he says is everlasting. Whatever he calls us to is of eternal value. Yeah. That's the good part. And Mary was consuming that. Martha was concerned about everything that's not going to matter is going to be burned up anyway. Mm. Okay, so uh, we're going into distractions and things like that. And you spent a good amount of time, Luke 12, talking about worry, right? Yeah. And so the the passage talks talks about the fact that, I mean, we're, how many times is worry even mentioned in those two or three chapters that you were running through? It's crazy when you read. Worry, worry, keep yeah. worrying, don't worry, do not worry. I know I highlighted right. them all for the first time ever in my life. Yeah. I, I, there was a, this was fresh highlights in my Bible. I'm like, oh my word, this is, he's definitely making a point about this. So what is the point? Why would he say don't worry so many times? Why do you think that is mentioned numerous times? Well, because it's a major problem. Yeah. Because yeah. it, it's obviously something the Lord, all-knowing, knows that we wrestle with right. all the time in all kinds of ways. Never mind the epistles, the later New Testament letters that mm-hmm. say, um, be anxious for nothing. But in all, mm-hmm. I mean, it's always acknowledging you guys are worried sick about everything, and not, most of that stuff doesn't matter. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Stop worrying. Don't keep worrying. And then not only does he say stop, he says stop because I got it. I have your material goods. I have your food and clothing. I I have your future. And he, he even says, that's in my understanding of what he says, I ha- we're worried about our future. All What's going to happen tomorrow? Yeah. He says, who of you by worrying can add a single hour? Like, So if you what can't do that, what's do? the point? Yeah. Stop. Yeah. Yeah, and so I and I want to bring that up because worry is, as you know, Jesus mentioned often here, a huge part of our everyday thinking, right? And so you mm-hmm. had said something of that there is no there's no place for fear and faith or yeah. worry and faith to be in the same same space, right? Yeah. So let's just talk about that for a little bit of how how are we supposed to understand that and to put our faith more in Christ. So let's just say somebody struggles bad with with depression with with right. fear with anxiety and i believe that happens a lot right, right. whatever whatever you want to call that uh, maybe more so than the person next to them, yeah that's right? that that for sure happens yeah are, are we i think i fight it just to to make some friends out there because i preach against this all the time sure like i, I preach against anxiety i preach against all these ridiculous medications that are being peddled on yeah. us out there and i think people might interpret that as Wes doesn't understand, and he's just grinding axes, and, and not because anyone's necessarily no, that's, said that's that. That's good too. that you said that. Yeah, but I, I'm I'm preaching out of my own heart. Like I could go, I could go pitch a doctor on a diagnosis and get prescribed an anti anxiety or anti depression medication. I I could I could say the word. I know the words to say, not just to con them, but because I feel those challenges that people probably feel out there. Okay. Because I don't have a problem admitting that I fight. I can go, I can go to a shadowy place, man. All right, I can so, curl up in bed. <laughs> let's get personal and specific. Yeah, it's fine. And I'm a little uncomfortable admitting all this. Hey, I, now you now you brought it up. We're gonna go because I also into it. like I also 
I'm a big on masculinity, Scott. So I, don't want, I, don't want, <laughs> I don't want to reveal too much thought. I understand. But I think it might be helpful because I do preach against it, but I'm yeah. preaching against it out of my own gut. Okay. You know? so, so what are those things that, uh, some examples that, whew, sweaty this, right this now. Worries, more, worries me more than anything in my life are a couple things. What? Listen, man, I, I, I worry about the future of my kids. I, I, I worry about the future of the church. Mm-hmm. I worry about my competence as a husband, uh, as, as I, I worry about whether I'm a good father. And, and then, of course, if you worry, then you obviously think you're not. Like, what are you worried about? If, yeah. you, if you think you've got it, then you don't worry or that God is helping you do it. So that creeps in on me. That It creeps in like a virus, you know? I, I worry about, like, I, you know, I'm not the pastor I should be. I'm not the preacher I should be. I, every week I think, like... This, that's probably the last sermon that'll ever make any sense. And the last time, <laughs> next time I prep, everyone's going to realize that I, you know, I, I, I don't know how to preach. I'm, mm-hmm. I, I, all these things, man, these doubts and insecurities, they just creep in terribly, you know? Um, man, I could go for a long time. And so, <laughs> I so, so I, I'd like to, just talking about this, I'd like to go get in bed and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> just like, just turn, pull, the, pull the shades and just like, <laughs> like right. I, I mean, it creeps in my stomach, man. It, yeah. And it clouds my mind and, and I, I get, I get kind of wigged out. I get overwhelmed real easy. Yeah. I, I'm with you. I think um, family, like being a, being a husband and a father and then, and then a pastor, that is, it's an overwhelming thing. Oh my word. It, those are like the three hardest things, and I'm not saying people don't have hard things in their life. Like for me, those are the three hardest things in the world. And you just think every day, dude, am I doing this thing right? Like this is, I know, am I doing anything you. right? And yeah. and then I'll leave. You know, I'll travel somewhere. Whether and it's not even like I got to travel to some crazy foreign country. I, you know, I preach in a prison in Ohio and drive down the highway, mm-hmm. and Aaron's in the car with me. I'm like, are we both going to die? And then my kids aren't going to have parents. Like, oh my word! And, and you know, so then you kind of just sink into this. And I, you know, I just want to say also, so I, 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 I've known you for a long time, so I know you battle this. Like, I, I mean, we, we both would say, I don't think people realize I'm, we're very nervous people. Don't you think like by, if left unto ourselves, yeah. are you a nervous person? I mean, yeah, I guess when you, when you, when you talk about it that way, yes, for sure. They're n- nervous. For- I can, I guess I'm vulnerable. Yeah. And I've wondered, like, I don't think I watch people that are ice cold, man. And I'm not in but a bad you know way. What, you know what though? People would say that about you people i know so like dude you're up there preaching i know he's ice cold never think about it so (laughs) i would say i know and i'm not trying to make an idol of anybody i think everybody is you know i think they are but again with dispositions some people are there's ice in their veins dude and 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 i think they battle with other things it's not that they're they have no struggle but that's i get nervous socially like I, I all the time, and but here's the thing, you say people might perceive me otherwise. Same as you. Yeah. People think you're real relaxed. Like, oh, it just puts me at ease, and I agree with that. You right. do. And I'm thinking, like, man, I'm, ner- I'm nervous just talking about this. Yeah, dude, totally. But <laughs> I, I take no medication, and mm-hmm. I'm not saying that out of pride. I, I, I like, if you do, you're a loser. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that. But I don't. I, I could qualify for anti-anxiety, anti-depression medication. And I don't take anything because I, I have learned when I go that what that all those weaknesses do and they they force me if I'm going to do what I'm called to do, it drives me to the word of God and pleading to the Lord. And honestly, he does remedy that. Yeah. And the yeah. minute yeah. the minute I start to feel a little distance, I start to wig out, man, I get yeah. more depressed. I get more anxious. I start to I start to freak out mm-hmm. and and become overwhelmed instantly and I know like I'm drifting and I come back but the same would be true of medication right so what's the difference one's right. an idol and one is God right right and I, and I, I don't have a problem saying that because I feel like I know what people are battling out there maybe not yeah. everything but right not, yeah that's good okay so, so worry the, so Jesus obviously knew this was a problem he knows it's a problem the question I want to talk about and we're not going to get to half this stuff now which is fine at what point is that a sin, right? At what point are you going, I, I'm in flat out sin because I've put all of my, I don't know, all my worry or anxiety into myself 
or giving it to God, or what point is it a, a, a distraction? How do we how do we find that line? Somebody wants us out there is going. I don't want to be sinning to God. Like I don't want to mm-hmm. be right. Well, it can drive you into disobedience. It mm-hmm. can for me. I'm not gonna listen. I, I'm not gonna try to speak for everyone and level some judgment on them, make them more overwhelmed than they already feel. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, it will. If I don't trust in the Lord, then what that does is paralyzes me into disobedience, mm-hmm. and that's where I become sinful. I know the Lord has called me to do these things. I know that. And it's bizarre who he calls to do what, because there's someone more icy cold than I am that could do this a little easier. Yeah. But he calls yeah. them to something else that's a challenge for that's them. That's a challenge, yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, the minute I let this make me a slave, mm. I have not gone to the Lord because the Bible says for freedom, Christ has set us free. And mm-hmm. that is true. He frees me of this every day. Mm-hmm. Or not, but that's on me, not Mm -hmm. him. And so when I become disobedient to his Mm. word in my life, go preach the gospel to all creation, go do this job, go be a husband, go be a father, then I have sinned in my duty. And that is just the tool that the enemy has used against me to cause me. That's what the sin is for me, to not obey, because it'll freeze me into darkness. Yeah. (laughs) Bad. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> bad. And there's also like a, a habitual part of it too, where you where you do that once, bed, whatever, crawl. Oh, away. Like, I'm again, gonna, it's easier. I'm like, and, it's and easier the, yeah. to just collapse. Yeah, and then it's easier to do it the second time, and then just and just to get completely, completely out of it. So, man, this was a real one today. Was this was heavy. Good. Yeah, yeah, it was good though. I think it was good that we talked about. It. I'm gonna I want to end with a final question. Is some practical steps for for those that say I, I want to be in the boat. Maybe worry is a yeah. big thing for me. I'm distracted by all of these different things, and you might describe it as different things: anxiety, mm-hmm. worry, or drive. I don't know. Drive for something earthly. What's some practical steps to get in the boat? Well, first of all, admit that you should be in the boat. Like mm-hmm. I, I had to get to the place in my life where mm-hmm. I'm supposed to be over there. This is ridiculous. Yeah. God yeah. didn't call me to sit here like this yeah. eating popcorn. I yeah. got to be down there playing. The other thing is realize that ain't nobody, I understand the incorrect English, I'm <laughs> doing it for effect. Yes, yes. A couple English teachers watch this. Ain't nobody perfect in that boat. Like, that's what'll keep you, like, those guys got it figured out. Right, right. I'm the that's guy that's good. not going to belong. No, no way. those guys were a mess. Did yeah. you not read the story? They're afraid for their lives multiple times. They're accusing Jesus when he's asleep in the boat. Don't, listen. Ain't nobody perfect in that boat. So you might as well be in there with the rest of them. And you got to, you've got to look away from the world and look toward Jesus. But like every moment, every day. And right. and, and and it's not like a one-time decision. Like, oh, I'm going to focus on Jesus now. And that, listen, tomorrow is going to be a fresh battle. Like whatever I put away yesterday and had to trust the Lord for, that's long gone. And now I got to trust the Lord for different things today or I'm going to wig out and disappear. Yeah. I think that's good how you bring up the perception of others, just as somebody would perceive you as cold blooded, <laughs> like you're up there, like none of that. And we think that, like the disciples, dude, they were they were all in, like they had they had no worries, they had no struggles. Those guys questioned Jesus all the time. All the time. And was like, what is happening? And so, dude, no, nobody's got it figured out. No one does. But they were willing, willing to take that step, willing to drop some of those earthly things and say, I'm going to follow the Lord. Right. So, yeah. Trust the Lord, step in that boat. And he, he, there's a little bit of a frog in your throat. Like, I, again, I don't want to keep coming back. Every time I preach, every time you preach, every time God calls us totally. to obey in some way, I freak out. Dude, I had to have those prison guys that I go, I go preach in the prison. Yeah. So I wore one t-shirt on the first trip and I, I was sweating, not necessarily because of heat, because I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> so I sweated through the shirt, which is like, gross yeah so i'm like man do you have like a breathable material so literally josh brought me a, he's like hey i heard you needed a different shirt only because, because i'm the, yeah. swallowing frogs like like i and i'm just trusting the lord and then when you get in that moment the holy spirit takes over and yeah. you're someone else yeah but like yeah that's that is true it did that, that anxiety doesn't necessarily last for the whole no absolutely not 48 minutes no the like middle preach. of preaching i'm i'm in but that's from yeah. somewhere else man yeah that's, i i would agree i would agree completely so very cool. You have any? I don't know if I'm supposed to ask this. You have any idea where you're going next week? I have an idea, but I don't want to say out okay. loud because it might not do that at all. Oh, it's fine. I've I've okay. had that too, where the sermon yeah. like totally changed yeah. the shape. Yeah, over, I have some over the weeks. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks for listening today. Thanks for watching. Don't take our word for it. Being his this week. We'll see you next week on the encore.